Okay, we're going to take a brief look at the properties of logarithms in terms of condensing and expanding logarithms. And there's three main properties that go with them. The first one is the product property. And that one pretty much states that if we have a logarithm that has a multiplication on the inside here, we can expand this with two logarithms by addition. Uh, for a quick example here, we have the expansion here of log base 5 of xy squared. Now the x and the y squared are being multiplied, so now we'll be able to expand this as log base 5 of x plus the log base 5 of y squared. Again, the two things that were being multiplied, we can expand with addition. The next one, if we condense, this is way if we're working backwards now, if we, we have the log base 4 of z plus log base 4 of w, again, the addition here, that implies the multiplication that was going on. So we can write this as one logarithm. Again, if we're condensing back down, we need to just have one logarithm in our answer, and that's just z times w. So that's the product property. Our next property is the quotient property. And here we have a log base a with two things that are being divided as the quotient. This can be expanded with a subtraction. So for a quick example here, we got log base 7 of x divided by 3. We can expand this as two logarithms of log base 7 of x minus log base 7 of 3. And if we go the other way with condensing, we notice again the subtraction that's going here. And we're condensing down to one logarithm. So we'll have log base 4 of x squared over 2y. Our last property is our power property. Our power property says if we have log base a of some expression here to a power, this power right here can actually come all the way down in front. And as you notice right here, p times the log base a of u. So a quick example here, log base 2 of x squared. This 2 is the exponent or the power, so this can come all the way down in front, and we'll wind up with 2 log base 2 of x. So here we're going the other way, where we are condensing possibly. We have 3 in front, so now we know that the 3 can go all the way up here and help us with log base 9 of y cubed. So let's look at a few examples here. We have an expansion example, so we want to make sure that we're expanding this to include many logarithms. So first thing we got to notice, what operation is happening? So we have 5x cubed y. So we know that a multiplication is going on here, and we have three things that are being multiplied, the 5, the x cubed, and the y. So we know we're going to have three logarithms. So the first thing we're going to do is going to go with the log base 4 of 5, and then the expansion with product property had an addition. And then we're going to have the log base 4 of x cubed. And then plus the log base 4 of y. So we've expanded everything. Now the last thing we need to check is if there's any powers. And we still have a power right here. And so from the power property, the 3, it's got to go all the way down in front. So our final answer, our full expansion here is log base 4 of 5 plus 3 log base 4 of x plus log base 4 of y. So there is the original problem expanded with many logarithms there. So let's look at another one. Here we have a quotient going on. So again, the quotient property meant that that implies division implies subtraction. So therefore, even though it's a, not a common logarithm, it still property still holds for natural logarithms. So I know it's going to be the natural log square root of 3x minus 5 minus the natural log of 7. Now we look for any powers. Now there's no power with the 7. Now there doesn't look like there's a power with the 3x minus 5, but it's actually kind of hidden. We know that the square root is the exact same thing as the 1 half power and therefore, we can actually take now the 1 half power and put it down in front. So our final expansion is going to be 1 half natural log of 3x minus 5 minus the natural log of 7. So there's a quotient property there with the expansion. Now let's look the other way. Let's condense. Now we're starting with many logarithms. And we got to make sure when we condense, we want to make sure we have one log at the end. And this is probably something that I see all the times that when we're condensing, people want to put more than one logarithm. In your final answer, there should be only one logarithm. First thing you want to check, all the numbers in front. Let's make sure they go up as a power. 
So then we know this is going to be log x to the 1 half minus log of x plus 1 cubed. And then we know that the subtraction implies division. So we're going to have one logarithm, x to the 1 half divided by x plus 1 cubed. Or if you want to get real fancy, again, we know that the log of x to the 1 half, that's the same as the square root of x all over x plus 1 cubed. So there, again, we start off with two logarithms, and we're down to just one logarithm at the end. In our last example, again, here we have the natural log here. Now we're checking numbers in front, so the 2 is going to come up. So we're going to have the natural log, x plus 2 squared, plus the natural log of x. And then we know that we can multiply with the addition there. So we're going to have one logarithm. And we know we're going to have x plus 2 squared times x. Now, we could simplify this even more. We could expand the x plus 2 squared and multiply by the x. So we can have it like this as x plus 2 squared is going to leave us with x squared plus 4x plus 4. And that comes from FOIL, factor, FOIL multiplication. And then multiply by the x again. We'd have the natural log finally of x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x. Full expansion or full condensing there down to one logarithm. Now, we could leave a multiple choice with this answer, with this answer, or with this answer. Uh, probably the most simplified here, this would be your best one to note right there. So there's some expansion and condensing problems with logarithms.